Hello everyone, and now a few days have passed and I'm still very much excited because of the news that Microsoft will own both Activision and Call of Duty. And today I want to talk about, in my opinion, one of the best Call of Duty games ever made, but also in my opinion, the second best Call of Duty game set during World War II. I am, I am of course talking about Call of Duty 2, which was one of the first Call of Duty games that I played when, on my Xbox 360, and I love this game so much, and today I want to talk about why this game is so great. Now, Call of Duty 2 was one of the first Call of Duty games set during World War II, and I personally love this. I have mentioned this before, that I really like Call of Duty games being... I love them being set during World War II, and this game is probably a big reason for this. Being able to experience not only the Western Front as the Americans, but also the African Front as the British, and the Eastern Front as the Soviet Union, is just so much fun. And while Vanguard did do a good job, in my opinion, with showing each front, in my showing each front of the war, in my opinion, Call of Duty 2 does a fantastic job of this. Being being able to experience these amazing battles is so much fun, and it really feels like you are a soldier in this war. That is. And that is something I really love about Call of Duty. Starting with fighting in Stalingrad, then in a Africa, and then the first American mission, Big D-Day, is just fantastic. Now, because this game set during World War II and on a historic event, there isn't really a story in Call of Duty 2. Because throughout the enti entire game, you are experiencing big battles during the war. Unlike Call of Duty World War II and Vanguard, this game's story is just you fighting in a war and freeing Europe from the Nazis. There isn't anything else other than that, and I personally like this. Rather than trying to make its own story set during World War II, instead this game just lets you experience major battles that, that were fought during the war. And while the ending of the game doesn't really feel much like an ending, I still very much like it. This game is just a World War II shooter, and it's not trying to be anything else. Now, the gameplay of Call of Duty 2 is very much the same as any other Call of Duty game, and I have said this many times, I personally love this. I like that this game, I don't have to relearn how to play this game, and instead I can start playing and have so much fun. Because this game is set during World War 2, we get to use a lot of the guns a lot of the guns from that time period, like the M1 Grand, the Car 98K, MP40, the Thompson submachine gun, the PBSH, and so much more. This game actually has my favorite version of the PBSH, just because of how much fun it is using the gun. You also have frag grenades, smoke grenades that you can use during battle. I personally love throwing smoke and then charging in with a machine gun trying to kill as much people as possible. I also like how rifles are good at long range while machine guns are good at so short range, so there is a reason for two different types of weapons. You also have pistols in this game while they make you move really fast. I honestly do not like using them in this game compared to other Call of Duty games, so I normally avoid them. There are also moments in this game where you have to take out tanks and you can either take them out with RPG or run up right to them and planting a sticky bomb, sticky bomb on them. There are also two tank missions in this game and they are pretty fun and while the tank controls in this game aren't great, the tank missions, they, they are pretty fun, they, they aren't bad. Now, in my opinion, Call of Duty 2 has the best sounding guns from any video game. They sound so realistic and even feel like real guns when you use them in the game. I don't really have much to say about the guns in this game other than I love using them. And they sound the best in this game, especially with how loud they are when you fire them. They really make, makes you feel like you're actually firing, firing a real gun. Now I mentioned this earlier, but in this game you fight on three fronts of the war. The Western Front, the Africa Front, and the Easter Front. While you can't fight on the Pacific Front, the game totally makes up for it by having every mission in this game being so much fun. I actually wish there was more than just three missions where you played as the Soviet Union in this game because that... And that, that doesn't mean that I hate the British and American missions, I just wish there was more time spending on the Eastern Front compared to the Western Front and the Africa Front. I love every mission in this game and love fighting on all three fronts and Call of, Duty, Call of Duty 2 has the best version of D-Day out of any other Call of Duty game. Honestly, no other game has surpassed the D-Day mission in Call of Duty 2. Call of Duty 2 doesn't really have that much characters that stand out. They, they don't really stand out at all. They don't have characters like Woods or Mason or Soap. 
but Call of Duty 2 does have some great characters. Captain Price is in this game, and while he isn't as cool as he is compared to Modern Warfare, and to, to the like Modern Warfare games, I still love Captain Price in this game because who doesn't love Captain Price? But there are also characters like Sergeant Randall, Private McGregor, Private Braeburn, and also the characters that you play as. And while they do not have a voice, all three of them have a name while the characters actually call you by. First, you play as Fasili in the Soviet Union missions, and then Sergeant Davis in the British missions, and lastly, you play as Corporal Taylor in the American missions. You are able to get a sense of what the characters' personalities are and what they think at the beginning of, uh, at the beginning of each mission when we get to see the journals talking about the missions while the game loads, and I really like this. While I prefer the main character having a voice, being able to talk, I do like... I do like that while they do not talk to you in the game at all, you get to see what, like, what they are like and what they think because of the journals, which is very much what Outlast 1 did, and I really like this. Call of Duty 2 is just such a fantastic game, and I highly recommend it. I do think this game is a little underrated and even overlooked, because I believe many people don't pay attention to the early Call of Duty games set during World War 2, and that's a shame. I love this game, and it's my third favorite Call of Duty game after Black Ops 1 and Call of Duty World War 2. And I know I said in my video defending Call of Duty World War 2 that this game was the best Call of Duty set during World War 2. And while I no longer think that, I still think this game is fantastic and I do strongly recommend everyone play this game. It is so good.